All right, welcome to January 20 market update. What's going on in the world of real estate? We are here in New York City, the greatest city in the world, of course. Uh, a little bias there, being that this is the only city I've ever lived in besides your college in Pennsylvania. But what is going on with the marketplace? We are not going to be talking about the stock market. We're not going to be talking about politics. We are solely talking about real estate in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. That's it. If you want information somewhere else, you go there. But this is actually a very good indication. It's a major city. It's the most populous in the United States of what's to come. 2009, we were a little behind the recession, okay? So that hit the rest of the country in 2009, and then it hit New York City in 2010, and we kind of stagnated in 2010. The opposite is true, is that we entered a very slow time in 2008 and 2000, 2008, 2018 and 2019 and 2020, it's going to be slow, but these numbers are coming in a little bit different than what I thought they were going to be coming in as. So there's only three indicators that there's every indicator, you know, that you could trust, you know, new homes, existing inventory, price cuts, how many homes are selling below ask, what is the percentage below ask, what is the average price, what is the median price. The only three things that I really look at is days on the market, how many new homes are coming on the market, and then the price percentage differentiation. So a lot of people, they say the number. I don't really care about the number because that can fluctuate. Like right now, it's one, it's just above 1.5. And then a couple of months ago, it was $2 million. And, and you think about that and you're like, wow, $2 million, 1.5, that's a lot. But you really consider it. Yes, it is a lot, but it's really only about 20, 22%. And by the way, that's across all of Manhattan. There's pockets that are much better than other areas like Upper East Side, Upper West Side, totally different. So let's just go over the numbers. Number one is the sales price. We're just going to do Manhattan. The sales price in Manhattan is down, yeah, 4%. However, I'm about to talk about the days on the market, and I am specifically going to be talking about, especially or specifically going to be talking about the previous months, which is as important as month over month, okay? So we're down 4%. However, it is a large number. 4% is a large number. However, before that, it was zero and zero, okay? No change, Okay, and I'm going to give you my conclusion of why we are about to hit bottom if we haven't already hit bottom. Okay, new homes on the market drastically lower at 35%. That is understandable going into the holidays. Nobody wants to put their home on in the holidays. Obviously, we're in January, but these numbers are reflected from December. Days on the market 86. Okay, that sounds like a lot. It is a lot. I would not. And that's on average, so that's not the greatest number. And I would say that would be a high number, except when you actually consider it was at 110 and then 100 and now 86, okay? So when you're seeing less days on the market, that means two things. That means that the amount of inventory has finally reached the amount of buyers. That's good. I'm sorry, the opposite. The amount of buyers have finally reached the amount of inventory because there was a flood, a flood for two years of inventory and buyers got overwhelmed and they didn't know what to do. The paradox of choice hit and then they didn't choose anything and they never moved forward and they continued to rent and then the rental prices just skyrocketed, literally just compounding 2%, 3%, 4%, month over month, year over year is up double digits all across all of the boroughs. And you're thinking, you have Hudson Yards, which has 800 and something units of rentals. And then that's not even considering all of Chelsea New Development, West Chelsea New Development, Long Island City in, in uh, Queens, which has a ridiculous amount of homes that have come on the market. But when you see the sales market finally, finally coming to a healthy, healthy set of numbers, yes, the sales price of 4% is lower than what people want, I understand. However, when you're actually seeing bottom out of numbers going into the holidays, usually the holidays, it's worse than that, okay? So that's a good indication. Brooklyn, sales price down 2%, okay? Again, this is not a bad number. 
This is an indication of the holidays, okay? Yes, it takes a little bit longer, three months in Manhattan, four months, five months, everything like that to close in a co-op and maybe 60 days in a condo if it's a cash deal or it's quick financing. New homes on the market, again, this is a significant difference, 30% less. This is nobody, if you had, if you put your home on the market before Thanksgiving, it was pretty silly because there was still a lot of inventory. There weren't enough buyers. They were all hesitant. They were waiting on the sidelines. They were waiting for next year, which is this year. Days on the market is only 70, okay? So Manhattan had 16 more days on the market. Brooklyn is very healthy right now. Brooklyn is probably the most bullish, in my opinion, borough right now because yes, there is large developments that are going to be coming online, but they're coming on at the end of this year or next year. Those are the closing dates. So they're not flooding the inventory right now like in Manhattan. Manhattan, um, literally 20 blocks south of <laughs> just, mm, I think JDS, it's either JDS or, or one of the new developments still has a billion dollars worth of real estate on their books. A billion in one building in one building still to be sold. There's a lot of competition, 57th Street, 58th Street. All right, so moving on, we have Queens. Obviously, Queens was my concern from the beginning because if you take the Long Island Railroad and you look north and you just see a tremendous amount of luxury buildings, a lot of them are rentals, but some of them are condos, but the sales price, though it's been going up to almost double digits for uh, probably about three quarters now. It has stagnated. It is at zero. So the sales price is unchanged. New, and this is from last year, new homes again is down 33%. That's something that's to be expected, as I mentioned, going into the holidays. However, this is the biggest bullish number that you can see, which is only 63 days on the market. If I told an owner that it's, it's going to take them 63 days to find an offer to get into contract, they would love me. That is over two months, by the way. Okay, so that's not the greatest number, but comparably so, which in Queens only two months ago, you're talking about 80 or 90 days, you're talking about almost a month less. So all of this inventory that has come on in Queens has or is getting absorbed right now. That is a very good indication within Queens because not only are a lot of people moving out there, their infrastructure is now skyrocketing. You're talking about new restaurants, new bars, new nightlife, things that weren't really there, okay? Updated facades on the storefronts for commercial buildings. Kind of what Manhattan has been in Brooklyn is already, okay? Queens is next because people are getting pushed into Queens based on the L, I'm sorry, based on the 7 train and then obviously N or R train that goes into there. It's very crowded in Queens. It's kind of crazy. I was just out there for a closing. I looked around. I was like, this is nuts. I felt like I was in Times Square. However, all indicators, you cannot keep on decreasing in price, okay? If you look at the Manhattan pricing, Brooklyn, it was kind of stagnant, went down a little bit, stagnant, went down a little bit, but Manhattan has literally just slid for two years. It started at a the average price of $2 million, and now we're just above 1.5. That's almost 20%, or it is 20% right there. So you have a big indicator that we are very close, if not at the bottom. There is still an incredible amount of deals. However, I'm meeting with an owner tomorrow. He's had his home on the market for eight months. And one of the biggest things that I had a conversation with him today was that we have to, yes, it's about marketing. That's what he mentioned on the phone. And it's about getting new energy and new blood, but it is putting it on at the right price. If you're an owner, you will fi find a buyer. It has to be at the right price. And it may not be at the, the price that you actually want or you thought you would get. That's the problem. There are buyers. It's not like buyers have stopped buying. There are 1031 exchanges. There are people that are getting bonuses. There are people that are buying Pia tears or they're selling their primary residence in the tri-state area and moving into Manhattan. That is happening, okay? So if you are interested in any questions, these numbers, to be honest, for me, I love it. These are the numbers that I wanna see. 
These are the numbers I want to continue seeing, which is a bottoming out and hopefully some positive. Get us back in the black. Get us back rising again. I per personally think this is probably going to be the best season for selling before the election. That's to be seen. But I also did go through 2012 and I did go through the 2016 election is that this spring is you spring was much better than the fall but especially this spring so if you're an owner you got to put it on with the right agent good strong heavy marketing and that person has to follow up if you're a buyer it is still an amazing time to buy uh don't look at the pricing and think you can't get a good deal because we just got a good deal on a place that we we got almost 20 over 20 percent off the asking price. We put in a ridiculously low offer. It was an estate sale. It was bleeding money every single month. And sure enough, we got it for an amazing price. So if you're interested, shoot me an email, charles at bonston.com. If you guys have any questions outside of that with renewals on rentals, a lot of people just shoot me an email and say, how do I actually go through this and stay in my home and the management company does not raise my rent ridiculous. We can help you out with that. You know, I'll just give you two factors on that, which is rent in Manhattan has been going up for 2009. <laughs> it's just been going up and, and there's no stoppage right now. You know, we just put up a home right now, uh, $3,800, one bedroom East village. And we're, I just got eight inquiries. We're in January when it should not be hot, but there's just people that need a home. And as long as it's priced right and it's put up, and it's shown right, it's gonna rent. There's plenty of renters out there. And on and fortunately, a lot of them are going as no fee. So there's no fee to the tenant and the broker. Obviously, he gets paid by the owner, and that's essentially what we do for all the properties that we manage. So if you guys have any questions, Charles at Boneston.com. Have an amazing day. I cannot wait for February's numbers uh, because that, my friends, is gonna be the big indication of what the market is to come 